Yeah, well, they, no, I mean, they, they're looking for the talent. Yeah. The thrill of competition wow. with themselves. Well, my son did not really get into the game until he was 10. I still have his first scorecard somewhere, first 18 hole game. He shot 122. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he only got really keen on the sport when he played his first tournament. That's where you, you know, just that little bit of competition really gets it in your blood. You know, yeah, you can, sport. Then you know whether you've got that passion. Yeah. 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 Um, girls, are girls taking up the game? Not a lot, no, no. We actually have a, a really fine player here. She used to work for us here in the golf shop, Melody LaMarche, and she's winning pretty well all the junior tournament, or not the junior golf, so it's not junior anymore, but she's pretty well winning all the ladies' events uh, across the north, just about every event she goes into. And she's a fine player, but uh, no, we had a program where we, uh, we really encouraged the, the young uh, girls to golf, but, Again, there's so few of them that are taking up the sport, it's hard to get a lot of them involved. You know, I mean, I, I, could, I could pass out 10 junior member girl memberships tomorrow for free. I'm still not so sure that they're going to even use it. You know, unless, you know, it would be better to give, you know, if there were a nucleus of 8 or 10 girls that all wanted to play, to give them all a membership, and then that 8 grow up together and play golf together, that's the way to do it. Not just to give one to an isolated girl somewhere who gets here and is shy and no friends, you know, no friends around and you know, she'll play once or twice and you won't see her again. So it's, uh, if I knew, I'll tell you right now, if I knew a, a, a bunch of girls that were interested in golf, I, mean, I would let them play for free. Just if, if, especially if there was a nucleus of them, you know, friends, you know, that all wanted to play and play together. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it would be worth our while just to see them out there. And, uh, I would encourage that. If somebody's out there that knows of a bunch of them wanted to play golf, I, you know, we would be, uh, it, would be, it would be great to see. I'll tell you, right now we probably only have, between the four courses, there may be five or six junior girls, maybe. How many guys? Well, I'd have to go through the numbers, but well, there'd probably be over 100, I would say. Yeah, over 100. So percentage-wise, it's like 10 or 15 percent of the total members? Uh, that are juniors? Uh, I'm sorry, that are girls? But no, total juniors. What's your junior Oh, uh, yes, yeah, yeah, but yes, that's right. Yeah, 10 percent? Yeah, about 10 percent, that's right, yeah. yeah. Is, where do you see golf going as a sport? Like, you know, junior, senior? Is, is golf growing in popularity? Is it, is it, did it peak? I think it peaked a few years back, uh, in my opinion. I think those years back in the uh, early, late 90s, early 2000s was about as peaky as it, <laughs> as it got. And uh, today it's growing through a bit of a flat spot. You know, I, I can, you know to me, I just... I see how busy we are, and um, uh, some of the memberships are a little soft. Some of the days are a little softer than I like to see them. When I think back to the days I worked in the 80s at Cedar Green, and the place was packed all the time. It's not like that anymore. It's not as busy as it was. Some of the tournaments aren't as busy as they were. So, you know, now there's multi reasons for it, but. Uh, I mean, it's not just here. I mean, it's uh, the U.S. is going through that. Uh, the rest of Canada. I think everyone's feeling the pinch a little bit. Uh, you know, and quite frankly, it hasn't helped. Uh, you know, the business side of things that the government has added, uh, forced us to add on the HST to all the prices. So we're taking less money in, really, or, or forced to add, to add the cost on to the membership or or the green fee, so which makes it more expensive for people to play. So you know, that hasn't helped matters much. Um, but anyway, it, it is what it is. Uh, you know, there's, everyone's got a theory as to why it's. Uh, but it, it's not. It's not booming by any stretch, and it's very competitive too. As I said earlier, there was like 17 golf courses in the area. You know, we could do with a few less golf courses in this area, which probably would help some of the others out. But it is what it is, and uh, uh, we continue to survive. So. And junior golf will continue to be a, a major priority with all your courses? 
Yes, for sure. Actually, uh, one thing we did this year is we had a junior golf giveaway. We gave away 16 free memberships in the spring to uh, like an uh, average of four for each golf course, Timberwolf, Cedar Green, Pine Grove, Stone Hill. And we had, uh, it was quite interesting actually. It was quite, you know, it was a, yeah. an idea that was developed and somebody, uh, uh, so we, we uh, sent out an email uh, calling the junior uh, giveaway and we had parents and grandparents uh, send us uh, the story of why their son or daughter uh, deserved to get the free membership. And uh, we ended up giving away close to uh, 20, 20 memberships. So it was, uh, it was, uh, it was quite, uh, it, was, it, was, it was great to read some of the stories that you'd get in from some of the juniors or from the, their parents and grandparents. It was something else, you know. And, and uh, we tried to make sure that uh, <coughs> most of them were taken care of, and because you know we're hoping that these people, of course, and I think it's uh, something we're going to do annually now. Uh, Introduce people to the game. It, it introduce them to the game, and they get out playing. And uh, hopefully, in future years, they do buy a membership and become regular golfers. So, so that's something new. And I imagine a lot of them would not have been playing if it wasn't for the free. I, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't apply for those that were previously were junior members. This is to introduce the sport to a, a sort of a whole new uh, cache of golfers. So. And you probably, you can probably recall people you've met during the years that came out for one charity tournament and got hooked on the sport. Absolutely, yeah, many so times. Just, yeah, the first time I played was in a charity tournament. I didn't even like the sport. I thought it was a stupid sport, chasing a white ball around the field. I've heard that a yeah. hundred times over my lifetime, you know, where they, and, 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 but when they get out there, they got hooked. You know, they, they said, wow, this is cool, you know, and, and uh, so and usually it's just that one or two good shots, and then they say, well, you know, I, I, I can do better than I did there. They go to the driving range, they hit a few balls, and then maybe they, you know, get a decent set of clubs, and then they, and they take a lesson or two, and they start hitting it better. And when you start seeing that cycle of improvement, that's where you really get hooked on the game, because you want to see how good you get at it. And then if your buddies are playing, and then of course you want to be the best of the, of the crowd, you know, and it's a one, up, one upmanship to right. try to, you know, Hit it, hit it further than your buddy, uh, and, uh, oh yeah, every and, shot and then, and then the score game. better than him, and so on and so forth. So it's a it's a real it's amazing. Cycle. It's amazing the feeling you get by hitting a drive a foot farther than your your partner. <laughs> yeah, your way. That's <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so good. Right? So so yeah. So I guess the future of golf, like the future of any sport, really depends on young people getting involved. Yeah. And having yeah. fun with the sport. Yeah. 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 We, we, so, we are going to try to do more and more of our part uh, at our end to, uh, to promote it with the summer series, with the junior golf giveaway. Um, July is, uh, July we have a week there where kids can play free. It's called uh, Take a Kid to the Course Week. And uh, the other thing we do too is uh, on weekdays after six and weekends after four, any parent can bring their child over for free to play. Oh, wow. okay. so, so that's another program that we have. So, so there's lots of programs so, yeah. in place, yeah. you know, for kids to play or to be introduced to the sport. So, uh, they just think we have to promote that more. A lot of people don't know about it, and we need to promote it more and let, let people know more about it. And uh, like you say, get groups of kids, groups of friends involved in the sport. That, that's this is probably one of the more social sports that you can get involved in. It is, and it, it's a sport that you're, you're going to take with you uh, through life. Uh, golf's not going anywhere. You know, it's going to be around you know, long past when I'm going. And it's a sport, especially if you're, in, especially if you're, no, not, not much as you, but especially if you're in, when you get into business, you know, you're a banker, you're a lawyer, you're an accountant, and, you know, uh, a business person, you know, uh, playing in tournaments and socializing with people. A lot of business is done on the golf course. Yeah. So it's a great sport. Uh, you're not going to get likely get too injured playing golf. You will play hockey or football, uh, maybe baseball, but uh, with golf, not likely. So uh, it's a sport that you can carry with you all through life. It's a sport that you can do a lot of business with. So I think, to me, it's, it's an essential. You know, kids should take it up when they're young. Take it with you. Yeah. Even if you stop playing for a few years and then you're 
sometimes they play and they play until their late teens and then they get interested in girls and cars and you know, other partying but uh, but they, they usually get back to it once they settle back. down they always come back to it they always come back to it and you don't forget those initial years where you learn the sport so it's that's important and once you find out that a person you're going to meet has an interest in golf you've got a connection that spans any kind of difference that you may have had yeah. Yeah. As soon as you find someone has a, an interest in golf, you can talk to them. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And many times you go to a social gathering, do you play? Oh, yeah, I play golf. And then, you know, yeah. Next thing you know, it's... Oh, There's lots to talk about. Where have you played, you know? What courses have you played? What do you think of this course? What do you think of that course? Yeah. It's, it's a great thing. Yeah. And it's great for going on holidays, you know. I, and lots of career options, too, isn't it? There is, absolutely. There's lots of... Uh, I think, uh, I think there's probably four or five co uh, colleges in Ontario that offer golf management programs. And not just as golf professionals, you can, there's uh, um, you know, uh, kitchen bar managers, uh, clubhouse managers, uh, uh, superintendents, uh, greenskeepers they call them on the golf course, and in addition to the pro shop management type of uh, programs. So. All those are offered through the golf management program that they have at Humber College, Niagara College, come to mind, those two. Uh, yeah, so it's a great career. George so College. Yeah. For, for even young people that are not at that elite level of playing, it's, it's like, well, you got your start by working in golf clubs. And the girl you were talking about, you said worked, worked yeah. around the <coughs> Yeah, she was from uh, Sturgeon Falls, and she yeah. worked uh, here when we first, first opened Timberwolf for 12, 13 years ago. Uh, I think she was in college at the time, or just out of high school, and, and then uh, disappeared for a while. And then she's come. Now she's a teacher, and has come back as a member. And she said, "I played with her the other day. Oh, she could play. <laughs> and young, Wonderful player. Your young junior works in the backstop. He's now winning junior tournaments. Now winning junior tournaments. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So Samioni, thanks for uh, spending some time. I, I think, I think when when we take a look at the future of any sport, it, it definitely is going to depend on how you can get the young people involved. The interesting thing about golf is, even if you don't have the numbers of juniors involved in golf that you might in hockey or soccer or baseball, once they're in, they stay. Yeah. There's no, you're playing hockey or you're playing baseball until you're 30 and then you can't run the bases anymore. It's, you know, once you're into the sport. Yeah. Well, there's a transition. Uh, sometime in midlife, there's a transition where, yes, there's a lot more in hockey and soccer, you're right, uh, at a very young age, I will say. You know, if you look at the sign-ups in Sudbury Minor Hockey or whatever. But at a certain point as you get, as you age, I mean, there aren't a lot of adults in their 40s and 50s that are playing hockey and soccer and whatnot, but there are a lot of golfers. Right? So at some point, it's going to come back to you. It's, and you can play with your family. And you can play, you can bring your kids up in the sport, and I think it's a great introduction for your kids, especially as I said, as you mentioned earlier, the etiquette of golf and the respect of the game. And all of that you take with you off the course. Yes, absolutely. Once you learn those principles, yes, um, they apply in school, they apply at work. And yes. So if you if you can develop those principles on the golf course, you're a better person. Yes, absolutely. Sam, thanks a lot for the time. Good. Thanks, Bob. Been very informative. Thank you.